everyone. So today I will be uh, discussing to you uh, this topic, never underestimate the other dogs. So you might be wondering kung, uh, why we are uh, taking this up because of course uh, here in MSR Studio uh, we talk about arts and everything so why the so why are we going to uh, tackle this? Um, of course, um, we need to be artistic and then we need to know the ways of the business. We need to be creative then uh, so that we could uh, come up with different concepts in our creative projects. But most importantly, we need to understand that not everyone will was born or in an instant developed as an artist or um, they already are aware of what what things they are capable of. So we in the culture that we are in we might be um, it's either consciously or unconsciously we might be suppressing them from um, being an underdog to uh, fulfilling their and realizing their full their full potential. <clears throat> so uh, there are a lot of underdogs who never made it, uh, as in they just uh, stayed with their nine to five jobs, or maybe uh, they were bullied until they gave up. Maybe they got depressed or even they committed suicide. There, there are other underdogs who strive hard and um, went against the tide. But either way, it's hard. So I uh, researched about uh, this topic to uh, give enlightenment to everyone who's in, in, this, who's in this industry. So that we could help one another reach our creative goals. So I've got points to discuss here. Um, there are different kinds of intelligence. So when you're good in one thing, you may not be good with another. But that doesn't mean you're stupid or you're dumb. And uh, so we also need to uh, define the, the difference between teachers, coaches, mentors, with facilitators because uh, they are the ones who who instill the information the knowledge in you and maybe the trauma if they're really harsh right and of course define spectators who your audience are so they may be evaluators observers pay, paying audience or uh, judges like in the um, talent competitions. So again, just like the teachers, they may cause um, some traumatic experience, embarrassment, bashing. So uh, we need to know also um, uh, define each and also know how to ta tackle them. And of course, the kinds of students. Uh, which is the top dog or the safe bet, the favorite, and the other dog. So there, um, uh, there are kinds of intelligence, different kinds of intelligence. Uh, the first is the naturalist. So um, before anything else, uh, the, natu the naturalist comes first because before we had all this technology, everything that we're enjoying right now, we, uh, most uh, human beings are really in tune with nature. They respect nature, they venerate nature, they, uh, their nature is their religion, right? So, um, they're, they're, they're the ones who understand other living things, like maybe animals and uh, plants, and the environment in total, and of course they know how to um, feel with nature, be, be in one with nature. So it's like um, the 
when uh, industrialism doesn't go well with uh, agriculture. So, um, you know, when humans want to develop a land, but it's supposed not to be um, developed, and other things that uh, we do for moder modernization, but we do not actually um, we do not actually respect nature. But a naturalist, or maybe now the environmentalist, would understand and would, of course, advocate uh, these things. So the next is musical. So uh, a musically intelligent person knows how to discern sounds, pitch, tone, rhythm, and uh, timbre. So um, I'm not saying that if you're um, musically intelligent already, you don't need training. Of course, you need training. You need any talent you have or any intelligence you have. You need to hone it. You need to develop it so that you could control it. Because uh, no talent or power is, you know, you, you couldn't um, own it if you're not able to uh, develop it with the proper training. Next is logical uh, mathematical. So um, you're able to quantify things, making hypotheses, and uh, also proving proving them. So normally those who are intelligent in this level uh, know how to predict things. They know how to forecast uh, the trends, especially in businesses. This is important because um, they because we we may learn from them. We may be ready before something happens. Like for example, this uh, coronavirus and lockdown situation. If um, we have, we of course we had um, people who were uh, predicting this and saying a lot of things. You could uh, search in the internet for that. So um, if we listen if our leaders just um, <clears throat> uh, for um, listen to those who could foresee, right? Uh, maybe um, it'll be more manageable than now. Existential, um, tackling the questions of why we live and why we die. So uh, there are a lot of people. Th these are the philosophers who find uh, the who find the why in everything. So for normal people, they they may not um, they may be um, very much um, bewildered by by these kind of people, bothered because um, they do not um, they uh, they just go deep uh, like they could uh, they could uh, make a small talk in a Deep, deep one and of course um, you need to listen and thus uh, for some people that's just too hard to to uh, digest <clears throat> interpersonal seeing people's feelings and motives so there are a lot of people who are good in this like all the marketers whether online or um, in, or the traditional market marketer they are very good um, in persuading people or uh, or um, make, making uh, making them um, understand their point, and so that uh, you're able to in business, you're able to um, get close uh, close a sale there. Um, bodily kinesthetic people who are able to coordinate their minds and their body with their bodies know their body very well. For example, uh, dancers who um, <clears throat> who are very much disciplined with with what they eat, uh, their their lifestyle, and uh, they know how to to feel their body if something is, if something is aching, then they're able to um, to cope up with you know how how rudiment. Um, Dance, um, dance practices could be, and also um, when you are one with your body, it it makes you more peaceful. <laughs> like you have inner peace, 
inner peace. Next is linguistic. So when you find the right words to express what you mean there, because not everyone is very much um, very much good in communication. Like a um, lot of people I know do not know how to express in words what they mean. So most of the time, uh, it seems that they lied to you because they did the opposite of what they said. <clears throat> and then the next is intrapersonal. Understanding yourself, what you feel and what you want. So again, um, if body kinesthetic is with the physical mind and the physical body, this intrapersonal is your mind and the emotions. So it's important to understand yourself. Because every day uh, in our normal life, if there's no lockdown, uh, there are a lot of things that you imbibe. So um, you have your own feelings, but then it gets tumbled over by uh, people's emotions or reactions. So, so, so it's nice to detox once in a while and um, attune your own self so that you understand yourself better. And that is Patya, visualizing the world in 3D. So those who are good with spaces uh, are, are the people who, um, you know, become, in, become an architecture or are, are architects or fashion designer or stylists, uh, interior stylist or designer. They know how to, um, to make a space sufficient and also um, design-wise <clears throat> okay there. So not, not just functional but also design is good. So uh, right now we move on with the kind of um, people that, who teach us. So of course the first encounter you have uh, is the traditional teacher. <laughs> But, um, of course, be before the teachers in school, you have your parents, right? So, uh, so <clears throat> moving on, um, with the traditional teacher and professors in the universities, all information from them uh, has to be taken in by everyone in the classroom. So, uh, there's no exchange, but um, the only th the only thing that would make the teacher give an A or or a D to a student would be when they take exams, and of course the student has to impress the teacher uh, with with the knowledge that um, was just passed on to them. And uh, of course, there are books that, uh, there that um, you, you know, uh, they, we don't have the open discussions, uh, like, unlike other things, unlike in other, in, in other um, workshops or trainings that you, that one person will have after college at least. But there are other, te but th there are some exceptions, like the teachers I had, who would um, engage the students, even if they are still in the traditional schools, like the high, like the like the educational system we have, to um, to be in a group in a group to discuss things and. Um, and also have a conclusion of their own. But not most students adapt to that. Uh, most students just shy away because they are very much in tune with this kind of, of learning. And uh, it's been, it's passed on and passed on until they graduate. Even in board meetings, you know, like the boss has the say and everyone just needs to jot down. Um, no one can, can say, their uh, their piece or suggestion, and of, and even in um in other trainings, uh, most of the time Filipinos do not ask questions. 
They just take in and take in everything that uh, the the speaker says there. So, um, so that um, that's that's it for traditional uh, for the traditional teaching. <clears throat> So uh, in the experience dynamic, now the the uh, the student enters this mentorship uh, pro program with experiences already. Unlike in school, that of course the teacher has the experience and the student doesn't have. So um, the same as with coaching, but of course again, uh, you're having this. Um, you're having this partnership with your coach and mentor because they know better in your field. But that doesn't mean you're stupid again. It's just that you want to better your skills at what you're going to be learning. <clears throat> so, so um, with, with the facilitator, um, the... More, sometimes, um, the experience dynamic, the facilitator may or may have, may, may have bet, better or may have lesser experience. Because, uh, but um, he or she is there because he or she is knowledgeable with the topic. And then, um, as with the exchange dynamic, sometimes, um, I I believe that as the student could um could could uh, share experience wise, but those experiences may or may not be correct or uh, may be a fallback whatever. But I think a student should um in this scenario should share more experiences that he or she had. To learn from them, because of course, um, the coach, the mentor, and the facilitator um, knows knows better, or uh, they have more experiences, maybe with with that um, with with what uh, the student would share, and maybe it would be clarified or give the student um, closure, maybe if um, that has been something um, that's on. On that, on his mind. <clears throat> so, um, as you could see here, the the coach has um, it's like with with the, with the student, the the coach has um, a parallel, um, equal of equal giving of experience dynamic and um, exchange dynamic. Thus, um, the given knowledge and the realized knowledge um, is almost equal. So the given knowledge is um, an, an exchange between the, um, the student and, uh, the, and the teacher or the mentor, coach, or facilitator. And the realized knowledge is um, somewhat like at the end of every session, uh, they would ask what what have you realized today uh, in, in our lesson today if it's like for example not just a one day program so there there this real this realized knowledge is from the point of view of the students which of course the these mentor coach and facilitator have to uh, respect so uh, the conclusion is not just one sided or from coming from the traditional teacher or just in books. The conclusion is um, is from two sides, from the given knowledge of uh, these mentor coach and facilitator and of course the student. So, um, but a, for a student to be able to have given knowledge, uh, sharing given knowledge is easy, right? But with realized knowledge, it takes um, critical thinking and analysis, which most students in traditional schools who are good with in traditional schools 
may not develop because of being like a teacher's puppet <laughs> or a teacher's favorite. But the underdogs, uh, they may be good at this. <laughs> so later we'll discuss. Defining spectators. So from teachers, we now move on with the spectators who are again um, externally may be influencing the underdogs. So first is we've got the paid audience, those who are the, uh, those people who are assembled at a public event, or maybe uh, through virt uh, virtual audience, just like in TV, radio programs, and of course the internet. So uh, the second is um, observer or witness, a person who follows events, especially political ones, and uh, closely and comments publicly on them. So the observer may be like the media, but uh, they could not draw conclusions from what they are um, they are watching because nonetheless they're um, writing a review about it. But um, to, to deliver news, they have to uh, stay unbiased. Supposedly, <laughs> uh, for evaluator, uh, this is a person who assesses the amount, extent, or um, value of something. So normally evaluators are found in, for example, um, companies or um, even those who do freelancing uh, when, uh, when uh, the person comes in to pitch something, like for example a project and they need funding. So an evaluator is there to uh, assess the amount, extent, or value of something. And the last is a uh, judge. That, of course, we kn all know because of um, the reality shows, uh, like talent, comp talent search and competitions as such, uh, they are the ones who supposedly um, watches for infractions of the rules, person able to give a person able to give a qualified opinion on something there. But we know uh, these spectators have their own loopholes. For example, the audience, they may, for example, the audience, uh, you know, bashers are very much prevalent nowadays. So, um, everywhere you may see, um, even those uh, people who just watch and they do not pay, uh, online bashing is very much, um, very much prevalent nowadays. So, um, and of course, the audience do not even look at the talent anymore or what the person is really, um, really there for. Like for example, when. When you're a singer and you sing, they look at your face, your body, right? And that's what they bash you for. It's not with your talent. Then the next is the observer or the witness, the media. You know, sometimes uh, with, with the onset of, um, ed of paid editorials, so now, if you are if you are if you have a product or an artist that uh, you need marketing for then there's this um, media who needs money <laughs> then what happens is um, the media who will write the per needs to be in fame to write in favor of the the product or the artist or the service even though it's not good then um, evaluator, of course, uh, supposedly just like the observer, they should be unbiased. But sometimes, you know, people can just get into them personally and uh, they could use uh, stuff like um, blackmail and all that. So even if your uh, material, your pitch is good, then, you know, um, they they might not approve of your presentation. Lastly, the judge. So, you know, sometimes, especially in 
um, TV competition, um, you need to have a judge who's famous, but not necessarily able to be um, to judge well, or they're, they're just famous, but they don't even have the talent, same as the other who are the others who are competing in that um, contest. So, again, um, these loopholes may or may, may uh, make or break our underdogs. So, um, why is the underdog so important, right? Or um, why, why, why did I uh, do every um, a whole study on this? So, um, later, um, I, we, we, I will be discussing that to you. So, up next is... There, the kinds of students. So this is, uh, for example, the setting we have in school. So again, um, this is the observable engagement and the internal engagement. So observable is what people see on the outer. Internal engagement is what goes on within the person or the student. So, academic. For example, so for the observable, observable engagement, a teacher could find a student who's always um, on time in submitting work. And then, um, who's very much engaging in class and other activities. Behavioral, um, always present, um, participate in school activities and always on time but uh, <clears throat> with, uh, with the ones who do not um, have this they may be cognitive like um, in, you know there's in, in this normal in, in the the one who engages in observa observable engagement their brain is just like uh, a sponge. Everything that is taught to them, they just apply it. That, that instant. But with people who are cognitive and effective, uh, consciously or unconsciously, well, most of the time unconsciously, if um, they're not yet that developed, they somehow filter that the information that is given to them. So they do not take in. They somehow analyze if, is it true? Um, will, will I be able, will, is this useful? What good could it add up to? But um, most of the time, though, those are the underdogs. And most of the time, again, maybe they may be casted as, um, rebels in class, right? For questioning the teacher. There. So again, so it's like everything you do in this world needs to have outer validation. So it's like um, the situation we have right now is very much um, in favor of those who learn through, who learn by engaging in with the observable. So, um, for those who learn internally, they may not be appreciated and, of course, laughed at. <clears throat> so, to, to finish my presentation, what are the differences of underdogs and safe bets or top dogs, right? And uh, why, is it, why are the underdogs so important that you can't underestimate them? So for me, um, the, the safe bets, they may just be people teasers. They may not have the intention really to pursue what they learn. They may just want people to be cheering on them. They may just want to, uh, to plead to feel that people like them or love them or venerate them. 
right? So, where would you go with idolizing people like that? Right? But, um, for the underdogs, you never know what's on their mind. That's the mystery of it. They may not like what you're saying, what you're doing. They won't say it. Uh, they may, um, research more on what you're telling them before they accept but you'll never know because again they won't say it they're more into actions and they take their time uh, they take their time with uh, processing the knowledge that is given to them or even well knowledge doesn't have to be from school knowledge may be you know just a plain information from from whoever <clears throat> said it to them so that's the difference between an underdog and a top dog right <clears throat> so why never underestimate the underdogs because you never know what they're thinking about you never you never know um, what they're doing because they're not a show off they may be just in one corner trying to change the world so you know we must be more encouraging we must not put so much pressure on them and uh, because you never know the person that everyone likes the top dog or the safe bet may just one, in one point or another forget about you and uh, it's it may be very much discouraging for those who um, idolize them so you're so actually you're safe you're safer betting on an underdog so did you get it uh, do you now appreciate underdogs more? So what would you do if you have a feather underdog before? And for the underdogs, now is your time to shine. No more procrastinating.